The first number one thing I would have you know as a physics student in my class is how we formulate the science that we know and use. What does it mean when a new theory replaces an old one that we have been using for a long time? Does this mean that the old knowledge stops being correct even though it was because something new came up? See, the nature of science is the exact opposite of a fashion show. What does that mean? What that means is it is not what is cool or in fashion or the latest thing that takes over. Instead, it is what describes what we see and what we're interested in studying best. Notice I said best because that means there is good and then there's something that can be better than that. In the early 20th century, Einstein came up with general relativity and he published his theory about gravity. Until that time, we have been using the prevailing model at that time, which was Newtonian gravity. Did Newton cease to be correct when Einstein came up with his theory, which did describe the universe better? Of course not. So what exactly happened? What does it mean when this pattern happens, which does happen to this day in science and physics and all different kinds of sciences? So here is a very interesting thought experiment that I want to tell you about. So pay attention. Imagine that you are inside a dark room and you cannot see what it looks like. You are also restrained, so you cannot move around the room. But you have a basket of infinite rubber balls. You are then asked, after one hour, to draw this room, make a drawing of how this room looks. Now remember, you can't see the room. What you might do in this case, to come up with a model of how this room looks, is maybe take those rubber balls or start throwing them around. So maybe you throw one on this side and you listen, you hear how long it takes for it to bounce off the wall. What that gives you is it gives you a kind of an estimation of how far the wall on this side is. Now we keep doing that on all sides. And that gives you an estimation of maybe the shape and the angles of how this room is built. How does it look? How far are the walls? Maybe you throw one this way and you hear that the sound when it bounces is different than the rest of the room and then when you draw the room you'd be say you'd be you'd make it look like you're saying that here on this side it sounds different when I threw the rubber ball so I suspect that there is a door or something over here basically you're saying that this side of the room looks different from the other side from every other side of the room when you make that drawing after one hour, what you have essentially just done is you drew a room that you have never seen. And what that is, is a model that is supposed to emulate what that room is. Now if two people do this exercise, they're going to draw two different rooms. One of them is going to be closer to reality. That's exactly what happens when we come up with scientific models that describe reality you can come up with something that's pretty accurate and then somebody else can come up with something that is even more accurate than that. So that's exactly what happened with Newtonian and Einsteinian, I don't know if people say that, Einsteinian gravity. So Newtonian gravity worked pretty well, but it had problems with, for example, the Mercury of orbit. We spoke about this and maybe I'll explain it in another video. When Einstein's theory came along, even though they were different, they were both correct in different ways. And Einstein's theory explained everything just as well, and it also included all the problems that uh, Mercury had, and it just works better now. So the drawing that Einstein made looks closer to the dark room, the real dark room, than Newton's. So this doesn't mean Newton was wrong and Einstein debunked him. It means that he found a better model to describe reality. Here's something to always remember. Once anything in science or physics is created and then proven to be correct and then showed by, by, by an experiment, 
vindicated, used, applied. It is forever correct. There can't be like in the future where it just ceases to be correct because it was proven by experiment. So unless the, the laws of the universe changed, it's just going to remain to be correct and accurate. What you can do, however, is you can come up with a closer and better explanation to almost everything. This is crucial because this is the takeaway lesson that I want anybody that inter that's interested in any science to understand. Whatever you're reading right now, including uh, general relativity, like, like uh, the theory of gravity that we describe now, this is not the end goal. You can actually improve it. You can come up with a model that's better than that. In fact, it should be the reason you're studying physics. To improve that physics, to understand it and find problems that are not solved. There will always be problems that are unsolved in any science. And that should be the goal when we study physics or whatever it is. To solve those problems. In fact, as we speak right now, as, as of the time we're recording this video, we are stuck in the problem with singularity in our current model of gravity. It doesn't work. We don't know what happened before the Big Bang. We can speak about that in other videos too in the future. So subscribe to the channel. You should be subscribed already anyway. So yeah, basically that's what I want you to remember and understand that you can, not only are you invited and encouraged to actually improve the physics that we have now, especially gravity, you will even be crowned with a Nobel Prize when you do it. So yeah, two things on that. Challenge the things you read and also see if there is room to improve it. I would encourage you if you are um, someone who is interested in, again, physics or anything else, go to Google and put unsolved problems in whatever field and then work towards that. You could change the world. You can do it. This is, it's, this is how it works. It is seriously, seriously bad form and it's, 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 it's like with everyone I teach, it is really bad form to assume that what you're reading in the book is the end of the knowledge. It's what the smart people figured out. Well, yes, you can only learn like so much on your own. You have to get a book of things that people have discovered like thousands of years ago. I'm not against that. But also, after you learn, if you do research, it's a part of your responsibility to improve and take forward the field that you're doing. So keep that in mind. So that's all I had for today's discussion. Thank you so much for watching. I would ask you to uh, support this channel and help me make it grow. And this is simply by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and please share this video with people who you might think are going to be interested in things like that. Or if you just want to support the channel, really. That your support, when I see that, it makes me feel like I'm talking to someone and people are actually interested in hearing what I have to say about all of this. And I've got so much to talk about, of course, related to physics and otherwise. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.